All right, I'm gonna make a little tutorial on how to replace the tweeter speaker and the wiring and how to do that with uh, a Scion FRS. So this is the OE tweeter speaker. So it connects in here and then there's a little push clip on the side of it that you have to press in and then you just pull it out. Um, I can't show you how to do it right now, but the tweeter speaker sits in here and there's like little clips. So here, I'll just show you. So it sits in there like that and then, you know, it goes in there. And when you're pulling it out, you'll just push a clip in on the side and then you'll just pull this whole thing out while pushing the clip in with like a screwdriver or something. And then you should be able to get it out. So the wiring for this, this is a clip. I already took the pins out and I didn't have to take the pins out because I'm going to be cutting these wires anyways. But I figured I'd just take the pins out just, just to make it a little easier on myself. And that way I can reuse this connector if I do mess it up and if I do make a mistake. So I called Crutchfield and they told me the wiring that you do for these, instead of having to uh, do what everyone else has been doing, which they like run a wire through the door to here because it connects to this speaker somehow through here. So there's two positive wires on here. There's uh, two negatives as well. And when I called Crutchfield, this is like the setup that they have them in. I believe I put these in the right spots, but anyways, I'll just take them all out. So when I called Crutchfield, they said the white and blue wire, which this one's a little pink colored for some reason, and the yellow wire are your positive wires. So they said these two will get spliced together. So you'll tie them together and then you'll tie in your positive for your speaker as well. I'm using the JBL, uh, JBL um, one inch tweeter speaker for this. And then you'll tie in the positive into these two wires and then that should be good. And then on the other side, you have the negatives, which is the black with the blue stripe and then the black with the no stripe. And those will get tied together as well. Then after that, you connect it to the negative on the speaker stuff as well, which should be the uh, on this JBL speaker is the black and red one. I don't know why they had to choose red and black. I don't know why they couldn't just choose like solid black and then the other one be red but i don't know jbl is weird because if you look right here it's like it's it's weird i think it's just some of the colors bleached off because they put these two together so i think this is supposed to just be solid black but i think the way that it came out of the factory i think it's just both but then uh you have this box here as well which i reckon is the uh i don't know some kind of amp or i could see a capacitor right there i don't know what this is maybe uh I don't know, some transistor or something. And then these wires connect here. So again, this is the JBL speaker. So you have the white and black, which goes to the black. And then you have the black, the solid black, which goes to the red, oddly enough. And if you look at the uh, manual for the speaker, it says which one's positive and which one's negative. And not only that, these are only a certain size clip too. So yeah. So I'm gonna put this together and uh, see how it comes out. And then I shoved this in the little holder thing. And then it says to just fabricate fitting it in here. So that'll be fun. And then after that, I have this speaker too, which I need to wait for it to come in the mail. And then I could put that one in too. All right, so I finally got these soldered together. So I soldered the uh, the black one and then the black and blue one to the black wire. It's black and red on this one. This is a JBL um, uh, one inch. I think it's one inch or it's half inch. These these ones, the Club 34, oh, 3412T. And they are whatever the hell these are. But yeah, so once you do that, you know, I soldered them together, the three wires, and then I did the same on this side. So I tried to put some green heat shrink on here, but it ended up shrinking like when I was heating it with the soldering iron. But that one's the yellow, and then the uh, white and blue one is under there, and that connects to the solid red wire, which connects to this right here. And then I did a function test, so I turned it on, and then I was able to hear the sound that I hear, because I believe this is where it connects to as well, is why you have to do that jumper thing like that. And then it also came out of the tweeter as well. So what I did is I grabbed this piece as well. This is like the little, I don't know, thing that the speaker will sit in. 
little housing. And then in inside of here, what I did is I trimmed down the inside of here, and I don't know if that'll make a difference. And then I wrapped this little cup thing, thing that it holds it in. I wrapped it in electrical tape, so you can see it right there. So the electrical tape is slightly bigger than this, but if you pull the electrical tape tight, it'll shrink and it'll narrow down to the exact same size as this. Um, since it's elasticized right now, it should um, grow, like in theory, if it comes undone, and that way it would actually hold better in the thing that you're holding it in. So the next step is uh, you put it, the speaker inside of here, and then you would connect your wires and all that. And then you have to like rotate this as well. So you can see how I have it rotated there. And then you just shove it in here and then you could click this back down. I'm gonna hide this stuff. I'm gonna probably zip tie it or something. And then I'm gonna replace this speaker at a later date. I have it on the way, but I don't know when it'll get here. But yeah, and then I'm gonna do the other side. And the other side I think is the same stuff, but the wire colors might be a little different. All right, so now I'm on the driver's side. So, I mean, again, you pop off this piece. I've honestly just been using a flathead. I'll just like stick it in there. And then uh, once you get it in there, you know, you just kind of like rotate it and then you just pop it out. But I mean, if, you, if you're doing this, you could probably figure out how to get that off. And I didn't score up any surfaces somehow. But uh, anyways, the next uh, is on the driver's side. So you have this connector. So this comes off a little tweeter. So, your positive wires are going to be the white, and then this purple one right here. And then your negative wires are going to be the red, and then the pink wire. So again, same thing, just like on the other side. You're gonna cut these, uh, the white and purple, and those are gonna go together. And then they're gonna go to the positive on your, uh, on your tweeter speaker. So that'll be the red, the red wire. And it goes through this whole junction box ballast looking thingy and then to the speaker and then your um red and your pink one are going to go to your negative which is going to be the black wire and then uh, i'm going to do the same thing i did over there so solder it and then heat shrink it and all that and hopefully it looks good always make sure you do a, a test afterwards before like buttoning everything up because then you're just gonna have to take everything apart if it's not good so I just turn it on and then I'll uh, go in the audio settings and then I'll balance it to the left side of the car just to see so that way I don't have to worry about the right side. And then I'll just like pick up the speaker and put it near my ear and then I'll put my ear down here to hear if this one's playing as well because I believe it controls these as well. Because if you look on the forums, people say how to do this. They said they like ran a wire all the way down here and then through the door and then to the speaker or something. Who needs to do all that when you can just splice these wires the right way? It's pretty easy though. So by the way, I'm I'm still taking these out of the connectors just so I can get a closer cut to them. So that way I don't have to clip them like further back on the wire. So that way I have more wire to work with in case I need to readjust. But I'd recommend doing it. It's pretty easy. You just pop off this little cover thing with like a pick and then you stick a pick inside here and lift up the little pins. And then... Uh, they just slide right out. All right, so right now I just twisted the wires together and I left the wire on this, this box thing a little bit longer so that way I can twist it around these other ones. And then I uh, put my heat shrink on there so that way it's ready to go. And then next is just heating up the soldering iron. So when you're doing soldering, if I remember correctly, I'm, I'm still pretty new at it. Um, you heat it up and then you tin the soldering iron. So what tinning it is, is you basically like, you can see I already have some on it. So once it gets hot, you just apply the the rosin core stuff over the tip of it until it's like covered in it, basically. I don't know what the purpose of that is, but that's how I was told to do it. And then uh, there's different ways of doing it. So some ways is you can heat up the wires and then you can just drop the solder on it to directly on directly onto it or i believe the other way is you meet the solder to the tip and to the metal like kind of everything together and then it melts that way and i'm just kind of playing around with it and what i do is i get it on there and then i've just been poking it around <laughs> to get it how i want it to be and it seems to work pretty good and then after that you want to do a, a tug test so just give it a light tug and see if it comes apart once it's cooled It'll obviously come apart if it's still liquidy, 
but it shouldn't come apart and then that way you know it's good and i mean you could even ohm it out if you know where to ohm it but aside from that i mean if everything's done right it should it should work properly all right and this is what i came up with after uh after soldering it so i'm just waiting for it to cool down and i mean it's not the prettiest but i mean eh what can you do you know it it'll be fine as long as it passes the tug test and you know it holds and it's able to transmit power and all that i'll be fine and then i have to slip the heat shrink over it and then use a heat gun to shrink it and then it'll all be good and then i can start doing the other side and uh, it's a little tricky to do just because of the space that you have considering you don't really have any space but yeah i would also put this little drip pan underneath here so you don't burn a hole through your dashboard all right and the last thing to do is to turn your car on you know and uh try and test everything out so what i like to do is i go to sound and then this is where I change where the sound is coming from. So I'll switch it to the side that I just did. And then uh, I'll turn up the music and then I'll listen, put my ear at this speaker and then I'll just hold this speaker up to my ear. And then if I can hear it, then I know everything's good. I should be able to hear it out of these and all of them. And uh, that's how I know everything's good. And then uh, once everything sounds right, then I can start buttoning everything back up. So what I did on the other side was I bundled this up and then I just put some electrical tape around it instead of uh, instead of doing zip ties because electrical tape is uh, it's kind of plasticky so that way if it does shake around it won't be as noticeable as opposed to a zip tie being a hard piece of plastic um, the electrical tape is more rubbery is what I meant to say and uh, yeah and then I just kind of shoved it in the hole and then the speaker as I said I put the tape around it to make it a little thicker this little thing and then uh, when you put the speaker in, in the little holder, if you use these ones, you have to press it down all the way, and then you have to rotate it. So what I did is I put a pick in this little hole here, not against the wire, and then I had to like pull it this way to rotate it a little bit because there's little locking tabs on the inside of here. But yeah, I hope the video is able to help you guys. You know, it doesn't seem like there's very many videos on how to do these tweeter speakers on these cars. And the only ones that are out there are all like OEM plus and they all have wiring harnesses. But this is if you don't want to do the wiring harness or if you don't feel like waiting for it, you could just do it this way instead. And then uh, I got to put everything back together, you know, and eventually I'll change out these speakers. But those are pretty easy to change out these speakers. All I did on uh, I did the back ones back here and all I did was I took off this uh, connector right here. And then there's a red and black wire, and then I just soldered the the red wire. Oh, didn't mean to do that. I soldered the red wire to the the lead on the speaker, and then the black wire to the other lead. And the red wire lead on the speaker that I'm using is bigger, the positive one, and then the negative one is a little smaller. Just like with these, the red wire one is bigger, and then the black wire one is smaller. So it's it's generally the same. And then uh, I just plugged the connector in, then it worked like normal.